Hello, it's Ruby and welcome back to A Day In My Life. Today is a Saturday and I'm starting the morning at 5am with editing. I actually can't believe that we're already at the end of the second week of term. At Oxford, our terms are really, really short and we only have six weeks of actual teaching. So to be a third of the way through the teaching already is kind of bizarre and makes me really sad. Good morning, excuse all of the SD cards which are on my desk at the moment. I woke up at five and I've been editing since then. There was a video from last term which I just wanted to get edited. At the moment I'm waking up between five and 5.30 and then working on anything related to YouTube until eight. And by carving out that time, it means I don't have to like worry about little admin tasks during the day and as soon as 8 a.m comes I can focus entirely on academics and it's actually working really well. I'm really glad that I've kind of moved into that because things were getting a bit, I don't know, things were just getting messy um, with trying to balance the two. One thing that I'm trying to do this time is put aside Saturday mornings just to write. Um, so from 8 till 12 every Saturday I'm going to try and just do things related to writing just because writing is really important to me and one of my New Year's resolutions is just to make sure that I don't fall off the bandwagon with it. We're going to head to Pratt and then I was planning on cafe hopping. I'm also listening to the Wonka soundtrack because Wonka was so good and I can't wait for it to come out on Apple so that I can download it. Hi, I started by doing some journaling. I'm trying to do journaling every morning. It's one of my big news resolutions. And then I read some more of Crime and Punishment, which I am loving. I can't tell you how good this book is. It's philosophically insightful, it's raw. The way that Dostoevsky is able to talk about and capture madness and guilt is just mesmerizing, honestly. Like it's an uncomfortable book to read in the very best way. Where was it, he thought, as he walked on? Where was it that I read about a man condemned to death saying or thinking an hour before his death that if he had to live somewhere high up on a cliffside, on a ledge so narrow that there was room only for his two feet, and with the abyss, the ocean, eternal darkness, eternal solitude, eternal storm all around him, and had to stay like that on a square foot of space an entire lifetime, a thousand years, an eternity, it would be better to live than to die right now. Only to live, to live, to live, to live no matter how, only to live, how true, Lord, how true. Man is a scoundrel, and he's a scoundrel who calls himself a scoundrel for that. I'm now gonna head to the second cafe thing. It's like 9.15. So after some necessary browsing, I went to the Cafe Nero here. I was working on a short story that I wrote for Christmas. I've just put back to my room. It's actually 11.30, um, but I'm gonna do some studying and then I might do a little bit more writing later instead. I think the main libraries are gonna be pretty busy at this time because it's a Sunday afternoon and the libraries, oh no, it's a Saturday afternoon. Hmm, I thought it was Sunday. Libraries are always really busy on Sunday afternoons, but they're not usually as busy on Saturday afternoons because I think more people take Saturday afternoons off from work. I'm gonna go to the Art and Architecture Library because that's actually a really nice one.
So I was just adding to my Paris Pinterest wall when I got back because my brain was quite tired. I've been craving Paris recently for the last couple months and mainly I think because I have a list of paintings I would like to see and so many of them are in Paris. I went for my 22nd birthday and have just wanted to return ever since. So over the Easter holidays I'm planning on visiting and have been using NordVPN to help with booking the trip because your browser history can affect how much you are charged for like a hotel or a B&B. And when I found that out, I was shocked. Like it can give you two different prices depending on the browser that you're using. It's not a static thing. It's not the same for every browser. So when booking a hotel, when booking accommodation, I like to change my VPN address and kind of play around to try and get the best price. So for example, I found this hotel price with a South Korean VPN and then I changed my VPN address to Mexico, checked the exact same hotel, the exact same dates, and as you can see, it was 25 euros less. I use NordVPN to change my VPN address. NordVPN is the fastest VPN server out there and it is incredibly easy to use. You basically have this map and then you can just click on any location in the world and change your VPN in one click. So if you've been meaning to try VPN, then you can get an extra four months free on the two year plan if you use my link nordvpn.com forward slash ruby and it's also risk free because nord offers a 30 day money back guarantee if you end up not liking it or not using it so thank you so much nordvpn and as i said at this point in the day i was just scrolling on pinterest and getting excited for paris um honestly i love pinterest so much but then after going on pinterest i actually had a nap which i never do i just had a quick 30 minute nap because i woke up at five this morning and i won't go to bed until 10. i'm waking up earlier nowadays and i do find that about midday i do get quite tired um so i'm thinking about incorporating naps as like a daily thing when i can do it i didn't actually sleep just then but it's just kind of like resting and i do feel rejuvenated now i feel much better so i'm gonna go out for some lunch um i really want to go to i always get the name wrong it's I think it's called Soul Bowl. It's a build your own salad bowl place. And I would say it's my favorite place to eat in Oxford. It's really, really good. I've been working on this children's book recently. I started it before time started and I was writing like a thousand words a day of it. Um, and then time started and I fell out of the habit, but I really want to get back into doing that. So I'm just going to write a thousand words while I'm there. Also, I absolutely love my mood board here. I bought this card, it's a Christmas card, but I bought it in the British library by alexander bassano the sketch december 1906 it's just such a gorgeous photograph i love how ethereal it is so um i'm just going to drop this planner in my friend's pigeonhole um because i said that she could have one I don't know if you can hear me because I'm wearing AirPods, but um, I just sat down to do some more writing. My hands are so cold though, so that was like five, ten minutes of writing here. The view is so beautiful with the sun shining on the water. Um, I really love this place. I'm weirdly tired and I know I shouldn't have another coffee, but also I do have work to do. I had my last coffee like seven hours ago. I'm just gonna add some almond milk. 
I started noticing a real difference in my energy levels when I had oat milk as opposed to like almond milk. So this week I'm not having any oat milk and seeing how it affects my energy levels. I was talking about it with a friend from university and so we're kind of trying it to see what happens. Mm, that's really good actually. I'm going to finish up that literature review that I was working on in the Art and Architecture Library. Um, I didn't get as much done as I on that as I thought I would. I think I always massively underestimate how long something like that's going to take. It's actually a lot of reading to do, so um, I'm just going to continue working my way through that long list. So what I'm doing today is just reading the abstracts of everything and jotting down the key points. Obviously you don't get much from the abstract, but the title isn't always very useful for kind of actually telling you what it's going to argue, and I'm trying to assess generally what the main points of interest are within scholarship at the moment. So I'm just going to go through, jot that down, and then I plan on reading maybe three articles today, and I will write up like a loose working literature overview that I can use while working on the essay. I think it will probably take me like three or four hours. That should take me up till the time I go to bed. So I just thought I filmed an hour long time lapse with this, well, an hour and 15 minutes, but the GoPro ran out of charge just as I clicked record, um, which is rather unfortunate, so I'm sorry about that. I did finish my literature review, but that's basically all I've managed to do today. I did not anticipate it taking as long as it did, but alas. Just for the end of this video, I thought I would give you a little book haul. Um, I bought one book in Blackwell's today, and then I went charity shopping with my friend Charlotte last week. We went to the last bookshop in Jericho, and I did pick up a few things, and also the Oxfam. Um, there are a few Oxfams in Oxford. Oxfam actually started in Oxford, um, as the name would suggest, and there's an excellent one on, I'm honestly so bad with my street names, but I'll put the address on the screen. It's such a good Oxfam for book shopping. So in that one, I picked up another copy of The Winter's Tale by Shakespeare. This is my favourite Shakespeare play, and I already have, like, a paperback copy, which is so similar to this, but isn't the cover just so nice. I think we could think of this as being both Perdita and Hermione, like it could be both. Like with the flowers you'd assume that it's in Bohemia, in which case this could rep represent Perdita as um, the Flora Queen representing the coming of spring. She's queen of the sheep shearing festival and she offers the whole company these bouquets of flowers in a very similar way to Ophelia and her name is Perdita, obviously mimics Persephone's name, whose arrival into the world from the underworld is what brings spring every year. But it could also be Hermione's statue because you've kind of got this combination of like the black and white and then the colour which speaks to this resurrection. I don't know, I just, I really liked the cover illustration so I did pick this up but I really did not need this. It was only £2.50 though. Then downstairs there are loads of art books and I picked this one up for just £1. Um, it's just one of these classic paperback art books. I feel like you always find them in charity shops. It's kind of just got like some of the most important paintings in western art and then as we were leaving I spotted a little box with some of my favourite book editions. I was just so excited to find these. So I actually, I would go as far as to say I collect these. They're the Penguin Great Ideas edition. A lot of the time they're essays um, and I think I've got about 20 of them now. Um, but these were both two pounds because they're second hand and so I picked up two that I don't have. First of all is Sigmund Freud's Civilization and its discontents. And then this one, first of all, the cover is exquisite. This is On Art and Life by John Ruskin, and I read quite a lot of John Ruskin's work last term for my writing art module, um, and I really wanted to pick this up, so when I saw it, of course, I had to buy it. And then we went to Jericho, and I got two books in the Jericho bookshop. Um, the first one is this this was £2.50 it's two pieces of travel writing um, and I mainly got this for the Venice because 
I love reading anything set in Venice. Like, honestly, I will read anything set in Venice. So if you have any good book recommendations for books set in Venice, let me know. And then the other thing I got is for another city. This is on London, though. It's a compendium of poems and short stories and extracts, um, which are about London. And um, I love the title of this as well, A London Omnibus. Like, you're kind of sitting on this bus going through London and you get to observe the city. But I love anthologies like this, which aren't just poetry anthologies, but they combine pieces of prose too. I think they're nice books to have in your collection or on your bookshelf, um, and I find myself dipping into them a lot. Um, the cover of this is also just stunning. I literally can't get over the cover. Um, and this was published in 1927. Then I bought a book in Blackwell's today. This was actually half price. My grandma got me a Blackwell's gift card for Christmas because when she came to Oxford, I dragged her into Blackwell's and Obviously, I was raving about it a lot because when she gave it to me, she was like, I know this is your favourite bookshop. This was actually on sale half price and I really wanted to read this. It's Frances Hardinge's new book. It's like a novella. Frances Hardinge is a young adult slash older middle grade writer, um, but I just love her like whimsical style. I don't know, she's kind of got this nonsensicalness to her in that she doesn't ascribe to traditional logic and I really love her use of like kind of these fantastic elements. I also like the illustrations. But yes, anyway, I'm gonna go to bed now. I'm re still reading Crime and Punishment. I didn't read it much this week, which is why I haven't really made any progress on it at all since the last time I vlogged but I'm honestly just loving it still. Um, so I'm going to get into bed, read some of that. Um, but thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. And I hope that you have more than just a productive week. Mm -hmm.